tips and tricks. And uh, I'm Dylan Pratt. I'm with Interlink Engineering. Uh, we try to help put together the SWUG events. And um, I'm sure you've seen me around if you've been involved with SWUG before. But uh, I usually try to do at least a short kind of fun little couple tools maybe that don't get enough play in SOLIDWORKS or maybe people forget about, um, which is what we'll do today. So uh, almost all the tools are going to be under the evaluation tab. I think some of those, when we're looking at uh, designs already completed, are often forgotten about and uh, can be really useful, particularly whether you're you know, a, a project manager or project um, lead and want to review some other um, colleagues' design, or you're just trying to review your own design. There's some really useful tools that people forget about that make sure you didn't, uh, basically make sure you didn't miss anything. So uh, let's start with, and then I have a bonus one at the end. Let's start with interference detection. Now this one, I feel like a lot of people know, but I felt like I had to throw it in there. Um, interference detection, essentially, uh, uh, you know, whether it's assembly or just two parts that you want to select, will give you an overview of uh, your parts interacting, right? If you have a two parts that are co more than coincident, if they're inside of each other, it will show coincidence as well. But um, what it's mostly for is for seeing that your part is essentially uh, interfering with the other part, interference detection. And I'll give you a quick example of what I'm talking about. Here's just kind of a simple <clears throat> sheet metal assembly. Everything, you know, with a quick eye, wouldn't necessarily see anything interfering. But if you run interference detection, and in this case, I'm going to just run across the whole assembly. But you can just as easily just say, I just want to see interference between these two parts. Either works. In this case, I'm going to. I don't know what that noise was. Um, and then you can actually see we do have little interferences across the assembly. Now, sometimes they're so small and the way the parts are, are coming together, you don't really care. But sometimes it is meaningful. So in this case, this sheet metal part is coming down into the radius of the other sheet metal part. So that flange just needs to be shortened a little bit. It's no big deal. But it wasn't obvious that that part was hitting. It was kind of hard to see with just a visual review. Um, that's one situation. Uh, let's see, what's another here? And it kind of highlights in red. I think there's a, a zoom to selection also, so you can kind of see what it's highlighting. Of course, I'm doing a terrible job of spotting it. Oh, okay, that's why it was over on the other side of the assembly. So in this case as well, the, the tab is actually just a little more than coincidence. So the intention was for the design to be, probably have a little bit of a gap, but something got miscalculated and it's actually touching or a little more than touching there. Uh, only by, uh, what is that, 0. 0.0006, I think. So it's very small, but it still could be meaningful. Might want to make some changes to the design. So it's an example of interference detection. Now to go back here. Uh, and if there's any examples or questions at the uh, uh, end about these different tools, I'll we'll have to rewind and go through each one. But um, for the whole alignment tool or uh, evaluation tool, so this one's pretty cool. And, uh, and this is definitely one that I think is an example of something I know I learned about a long time ago, and I just kind of forgot it existed. And the amount of times it would have saved me heartache because my designs were off by a few thou because we changed some other parts, something got revved, and then we uh, had holes misaligned and we didn't realize because all somebody had to do on the assembly was run the hole alignment uh, feature, which it does uh, make you come out of lightweight. Uh, I forgot that I was in lightweight, which is fine. So it'll just load the model, um, you calculate, and essentially what it's going to do here is just show all the locations which you're misaligned. So in this case, everything here, and you can change your uh, tolerance here a little bit as well. 
Um, but essentially, it's just going to highlight what holes are a little off. So these holes now aren't meaningfully off. Um, I actually just happened to pull up an old rev, something that was was actually being worked on. So um, it, it's not off by enough to really be super noticeable, but it is, it is off by uh, a small amount here. Um, I think it shows as well. Where is that? Oh, that's right. It kind of shows a, a super small value. You can measure it. Um, I don't think it lists it in the thing, in the uh, tool. But let's see, we're off by two tenths, two ten thousandths. But uh, that's probably not very meaningful for this assembly, but there's no reason not to have things usually dead on. So um, in a lot of cases, that will save people from, uh, you know, releasing a part or manufacturing something that's going to have a misalignment. That's full alignment. Switch back here. The symmetry check. So this one's pretty cool. I'll open up just one of these parts. It is available in assemblies. No, oh, actually, you know what? That's not the part I want. Sorry. Second. Good. I'm kind of holding a microphone in running SolidWorks. It's a little uh harder to do. Um, so this one's pretty cool. You can do it in assemblies or parts, but in this case, uh, I think this is a better example than part. So if I go to the evaluate tab, I can run the symmetry check. And essentially, this part is intended to be symmetrical. Um, essentially, it can be installed. Uh, the same part is used in multiple places in the assembly, and it can be installed on one side or the other. It doesn't matter. But it would matter if it's not symmetrical. If the part didn't actually, something happened in the manufacturing or the part didn't um, end up symmetrical, it wouldn't fit when installed on one side versus the other. So we just run a symmetry check. Uh, that's interesting. That didn't happen before. Let's try that again. Oh, did I not select the plane? Maybe that was probably. I'm not sure what I clicked the first time. I might have thought I selected the plane, but didn't. Um, but essentially here, what it's telling me is where it's symmetric and where it's not. So the, in this case, there is a couple features that were not symmetric. That actually is intentional. Essentially, the part is symmetrical, but it's really able to be rotated around. So what we do want is these holes not to be in the line there is a, a set basically put to the left and put to the right um, intentionally. And that is what the uh, symm symmetry tool is finding. And essentially it's highlighting those spaces, showing us, hey, these spaces aren't symmetrical. They're, they're not, they don't exist on both sides. Either. But we know that that's a quick quick check. We know that that's intentional, and we just move on. So somebody who's you know overviewing the design, I can just do a quick check, say yep, no, that's intentional. Moving on. That's symmetry check. And then the last bonus tips and trick, or in this case trick, is um, a feature called feature freeze or a tool called feature freeze, probably, appropriately stated. So this is off in SOLIDWORKS by default. Um, so I'm going to show you where to enable it. But it's a really cool tool, honestly. I don't think it should be off by default. Um, so essentially, if you go under it's in general, feature freeze bar right here, just enable it. It'll be off by default. Click OK. And then what you get is this yellow bar now. Works very similarly to your rollback bar, except in it, but it's essentially similar, but inverse. So rather than rolling back to unbuild your tree, what you're doing is rolling it down to lock your tree. So I'm gonna just let it rebuild real quick. So after you roll it down, it does do one more rebuild to, to kind of lock the features and rebuild the model, make sure everything's good. And now these features are both locked 
and won't need rebuilding. So essentially it makes your model faster to load every time. So if you have a large complex assemblies with maybe hundreds of parts, you can roll, uh, enable the freezer bar on any of them that you know don't need to be worked on, or even if they do, it's easy to just, hey, actually I did need to go back and change this feature. Okay, we'll just roll it back, it's fine. It'll rebuild, take a minute, but no big deal. Um, and then now your feature doesn't need to be rebuilt every time. Your your feature tree, I should say, doesn't need to be rebuilt every time. So uh, essentially it'll save you time, um, model time, loading time, everything. So it, uh, it works really great. And we found that it's really nice also because um, it'll help you, you know, prevent, you know, if this part of the tree doesn't need to be edited anymore, or you specifically don't want to edit it for one reason or another, right? If any revs going forward need to build new features because that's locked in or some critical geometry you don't want adjusted, you just roll your freezer bar down and someone has to deliberately make the choice or maybe get approval to roll it back up. And that's freezer or feature freeze. Sorry. So that's one of my new favorite tools. We're loving it over there. 